Now, if you've ever wanted to get into a side of a PC, but you haven't, or you're thinking about it, well, here's a good look of inside of a typical computer case, but make sure before you jump in there that you always unplug the power so that the PC is off and there's no chance of you getting shocked, or even worse, if you want to call it worse, not frying the motherboard, which can ruin your PC. So there's lots of things inside here. This one actually looks pretty clean and easy to navigate through. Just a quick look at some of the things that are in here. We have the power supply, obviously very important so we can power all the different components so that we can broadcast that information to our display. We have different optical drives. We have a DVD CD up here. We have different hard drives down below, all in this these drive bays here. You can't really see the processor, but it's underneath the fan here to keep it cooled down because it does run so much heat because of the amount of power it uses. But underneath the CPU fan here, we do have our processor, which we will go into in other chapters. From our power supply unit, you see all these cords that connect to our different devices to give them power to operate. Those not only go to our drives, but different parts on our board. If we had expansion cards, they may take power to them as well. So that there's a lot to do when it comes to power. If you took all of these parts out and you had that square flat board back there, that is our motherboard. We have memory slots. You can see those listed here. These are called RAM slots. Random access memory. We'll get into those in future chapters and the most modern cables that we're using on our drives now are SATA cables. These are SATA data cables. There's a difference between the data cables and the power cables for our SATA devices and you can see that those multicolored cables are going all the way back to our power supply unit so that is going to supply the power. Our data is transferred over that red cable which will plug into a SATA port on our motherboard. So that's just a brief look of what all you might see on a real low level for opening up a computer case. Let's take a closer look inside there. Here is our motherboard and we'll go over some of the items you can identify here real briefly. We have different slots on our motherboard here. You see this one here is a PCI slot and typically you can read print on the motherboard to tell you what that port or that slot is for. In this one we have some PCIe slots and these are PCIe 1 and we'll go over those in later lessons as to why they have different names because you can see that the next one here is also a PCIe slot but this is a PCIe times 16. Here's a larger version of seeing that CPU cooler. So this fan and these fins down here are going to draw the heat away from our CPU, our central processing unit, and then the fan spins and blows that hot air away from the connector. If we look on down here, as I mentioned before, we have the four memory modules here. There's one in each of these DIMM slots, and we'll go over why they're called DIMMs later on, but this is our random access memory. This is our RAM. This is one of those sources of information when it comes to an upgrade. One of the easiest upgrades to do when you're changing out RAM or upgrading your RAM, but we will go into that at another time. A term we'll introduce now, uh, just to get you started, is the chipset. We'll look at that more later on, but there is another of our heat sinks, another style right there, and the chipset is located below that. So it's just like over here where we have that heat sink fan right there to where the heat sink pulls the hot air away and diverts it up to the fan pushing away. We have a heat sink for our chipset on this board as well. And we have that heat sink with a fan. When that's together, we are going to call that the processor cooler. So you'll sometimes hear referred to it as the processor cooler. So I mentioned a couple of terms that we'll go into a little bit more now. The motherboard. Sometimes you'll hear this called the system board, and there are some other names out there, but generally speaking in the IT world, you'll pretty much just hear motherboard or system board being used. And this is the largest circuit board of the PC. Obviously, as you've seen from the pictures, 
pretty massive. I mentioned the processor as well, or we call this the central processing unit. This is going to take all the instructions that the PC needs to handle, all the data and instructions for the entire system is done by the processor. And CPU is going to generate a lot of heat because of the amount of electricity it takes for that processor. So we need that heat sink in that fan to pull all that heat away and keep our processor from overheating. I also mentioned a term earlier called expansion cards. And you can see here that it is a circuit board as well. The slots on the back of a PC uh, that you will see like these little metal plates for, you can take those out and that's where these insert to. So an expansion card, we also call these adapter cards. It's just allowing our motherboard capabilities to be expanded to allow for other capabilities. So as you can see from this circuit board here, this video card is going to provide more video ports than what is native to the motherboard in our PC. And just from what we went over earlier, you can start to identify these ports just by sight and see that, oh, we have a DVI port here. We have this port here. You see it's called a TV out port. Hopefully you remember the other port name for that. Think about it. And hopefully S video port is what jumped into your head again. And you see we have the DB15 or VGA port as well, all handled on this one expansion card. This is a PCIe Express time 16 card. Never touch the bottom of these cards, that copper plating there. Never touch that. You can ruin a card simply from the film on your uh, fingers. So if you are handling these, handle them properly. Make sure to keep your hands away from that as well as any other devices. You see this tab back here is to help stabilize your card. When you insert it in, there could be a little play, so the tab will help provide more stability to that. As you can see, because this video card puts off so much heat, we need another heat sink and cooling fan to pull the heat away from this miniature motherboard or a little circuit board away from that to keep it from overheating. Here's a couple other expansion cards. Let's say you don't have any USB 3.0 ports or you need more USB ports, you could get a USB expansion card. Or let's say you want to take a desktop and make it wireless so you can place it anywhere in the house but you don't want to run an Ethernet cable to it. Well you can buy a Wi-Fi card so you can make your desktop a wireless device. Those are used more often than you might think. So uh, if you have an old desktop sitting around and you want, want to be able to move it to another room, you don't have to want to run another cable or put another wall plate in, you can get a Wi-Fi expansion card or a wireless network card to put into your PC. All right, let's take a look at some more of these ports here. I know some of them may be familiar, some of them may not, but we have more ports that we can identify on this motherboard as these are integrated into this motherboard. You see here we have our USB 2.0. We have several of those listed here on this motherboard. We also have our eSATA port. You can identify that here with the red and you can see it is a little different than our USB 2.0 ports. For Ethernet connectivity, we have our network port here, and we have our light indicators here, so when we're plugged in, we can see if we have activity, if we have a connection, and all that. We have a display port here for our video, if need be. Next to that, we have our high-quality HDMI port that we're all used to. Above that, we have our DVI port, another video port, so there's a lot of video options for this motherboard. We also have some other USB 3.0 ports here. So we had the 2.0 down here, and we have 3.0 USB ports down here. Above that, you will see we have a FireWire port. To the right of that, we have our audio ports, and you can see that we have our SPDIF, our Sony Philips. So that is right there. So hopefully those are becoming a little bit easier now to identify. Another one that I introduced earlier is the RAM or memory modules.
This is called random access memory. This is temporary storage for data instructions as they're being processed by the central processing unit. If you lose power to the computer, all memory that is stored temporarily on these RAM sticks or RAM modules is lost. Now we have different kinds of RAM that we'll go over in later chapters, but I just wanted to introduce this now. There are also other types of RAM, let's say RAM chips, that video cards use for their video memory. On those expansion cards, that card itself for the video needs so much memory that it will embed those RAM chips on its own card. And I'll introduce a term here is this one is DIM cards or DIM slots. That stands for dual inline memory module. And I've just included a bunch of different sticks of RAM here just so you can see there are several types of RAM that you will encounter when working with PCs. I'll expand on that a little bit with what else could be inside this PC. Well, as you meant, I mentioned hard drives earlier. There are different types of hard drives. We can have a hard disk drive, which is a spinning disk platters, or we can have a solid state drive, which there are no moving parts, which in later chapters we'll go over. But hopefully, as you are working, you will start getting away from these hard disk drives and moving to solid state drives for the many benefits that they have. You could also have other types of drives inside your PC such as a CD or DVD drive that can be readable or read and write and you might even see an old floppy disk drive. Uh, hopefully you've, most people have gone away from that. There are still some industries that are using old technology that still requires the use of these. So this is one of those spots where I'll put a plug in for in your IT toolkit you may need to have a USB floppy drive so you can plug it into a USB port in case you need to move that data onto other types of media away from those floppy disks. Another most important part of the inside of your PC is of course the power supply. We also refer to this as the PSU, power supply unit. This is where we take the current coming into your house and we convert it to the type of direct current electricity that is needed on by your PC. Now typically when you have a power supply unit you have the ability to change the voltage from a power supply of 115 volts which is what we use here in the United States or you can convert it over to 220 volts which is used by a lot of countries outside of the US. So you have this little switch here where you will have something like that so if you're traveling, you're going to be going to another country, you may need to flip that over so that you have it set up for 220 volt use. I'll mention it now, but when you're building a PC, if you choose to build a PC, when it comes to the power supply unit, general rule of thumb is to look up what all you have on planned for your device, for that computer, and then add 30% to what you currently need. That way if you put in some expansion cards and such later on, your power supply unit will handle the added strain from new devices on your computer. Alright, now let's talk about hey now I've looked at PCs and they all I've seen some that are small that are small, some that are large. That is where we get the term form factor from. These are different standards for computers based on their size, the shape of them, where the screw hole positions are located, and what type of case they go with, and what type of power supply goes with that. So you have to know what type of form factor you use. Generally speaking, you're going to see two of the most popular ones. ATX, which has been around for a long time, we haven't gone away from it because it works. And you will also see micro ATXs. So the form factor, the motherboard, the case, the power supply all have to be the, of the same form factor. So if we put that all together and when we're building a PC or we're fixing a PC, by matching the form factor for the motherboard with the power supply and the case, that's going to assure us that the motherboard is going to fit in that case it's going to assure us that the power supply cords to the motherboard provide the correct voltage and the connectors we needed to match the connectors on the board.
It also assumes or assures us that the hole in the motherboard is aligned with the holes in the case because they're both the same form factor. If we the holes don't align, we probably have wrong form factor match between our motherboard and our case. In some form factors, uh, the wires for switches and lights on the front of the case match up with connections on the motherboard, but if they don't, then we know it's a form factor issue. So a lot of things to think about when it comes to matching our form factors. We can even have holes for our power supply not line up with the holes in the case, so we can't anchor our power supply because we don't have matching form factors. So a lot to think about there with form factors. Now let's take a look at some of those power connectors that come off that power supply unit. Now I have several different ones listed here. And you can see there's all kinds of and the collars are not standard, so this is they could vary from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer from power supply to power supply. But some of the common ones to know is this first one here, the 20 plus 4 P1 connector. Now it has four pins removed so that the connector can fit into a 20 pin P1 motherboard connector if you need. If you don't have a motherboard that has the 20 plus 4, then the 20 pin is still there so you can still supply power to your motherboard. Next we have the four pin 12 volt connector. Now this is an auxiliary motherboard connector and it's used for an extra 12 volt power for your processor to give it enough power for running. Next to that we have the 8 pin 12 volt connector. This is an auxiliary motherboard connector. It's used for extra 12 volt power to the processor providing it more power uh, than the older 4 pin that we just looked at connector. And if you'll notice the next one down here this is one you'll come across a lot too. This is the 4 pin Molex connector. And you'll hear the term Molex used a lot. And this is really used for those older IDE connectors or for drives such as the hard drives. Uh, and we usually call those PETAs or parallel ATA drives. And some SATA drives will actually use this as well. So if you have a larger hard drive, the 3.5 inch, you may see that it requires a 4 pin Molex connector as well so that you can get that uh, 5 volt to 12 volt to your hard drive to make those disks spin. Now next I've told you SATA power is different than SATA data. This here is used for those serial ATA devices and it can provide anywhere from 3.3 volts, it could provide 5 volts, and it could provide 12 volts through this connector. Now you'll hardly ever see the 3.3 plus 3.3 volt but just know that there are different voltages for that connector. Now one power connector you'll hopefully never have to come across is the Berg connector or the 4 pin Berg connector and the reason I say that is because it is primarily used only by older technology of the floppy disk drives but you may see one. All right, Another one that we have here is the PCIe 6 pin connector and that's going to provide more voltage or about an extra plus 12 voltage for high end video cards used in PCIe Express slots in your computer. As I said a lot of these video cards require their own power and they do so much processing so they may have to have that ran to them. Next to that is another type of PCIe connector. This is the PCIe 8 pin and you can see obviously there are two more pins there to provide more power for video cards as well and these are usually with the PCIe version 2 cards. And lastly you'll see here we have this one here this is a PCIe as well this is a PCIe 6 to 8 pin connection used by high end video cards um, so if you need the 6 you have it if you need the 8 you also have that as well so it can accommodate either the 6 hole or the 8 hole port.